All right, so welcome to this uh, new video. So we're starting a new topic on probability rules or probability laws. Um, so this is a screenshot I got from the first video, this one here. And the first few videos, we were going through basic probability. So those last nine videos kind of covered basic probability. Uh, and now we're going to be looking at probability laws. So it still links in. You can just study them a little bit separately and it's a little bit easier. So the next few videos are going to be looking at this. Um, so there are four basic probability laws or rules. So there's the rule for union probability, mutually exclusive events, independent events, and then conditional probability. So in this video, we're just going to look at union probability. In the next few ones, we'll look at the rest of them. So I'll scroll down anyway, and we'll start looking at union probability. So uh, actually, before I go down, I'll just say, so for the different probability rules, what you do need to know is you need to know their definition. And um, so sometimes they can ask for the definition. And then you need to know, we'll say, how slash when to use. So sometimes they'll ask you to prove something, prove that events are mutually exclusive, independent. Uh, they'll ask you a question about conditional or union probability, and you'll need to know to use one of the rules uh, to help you figure it out, okay? So those are the two things you need to know about the different probability rules. Sorry, now we'll go down and we'll look at union probability, which is the first rule. So union probability, it's a rule that helps you find out the probability of, write it here, A or B. So if they ask you to find the probability of A or B happening, you can use this rule to help you. And um, so the probability of A or B is equal to the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of A and B, okay? And the reason this happens is if you're trying to get the probability of A or B, but sometimes there's a crossover. So that's best explained when uh, we do an example. So uh, if you're rolling a dice, so it's just a six-sided dice, um, what is the probability? Is that, I forgot to write probability in. Probability of getting an even number or a number lower than three. So again, it's an or problem. So we're not trying to find the probability of even or probability of, of lower than three. Uh, and there's also a crossover. So there is an even number that's lower than three. So we're going to have to use this rule. So I'll start by saying, oh, use a different color of the pen just to change things up. So I'll start by saying P of E, which is going to be even, or lower than three okay that's the same thing as p of e union lower than three so like i said or is the same as union uh, and then i'm going to write out this little formula here in in our terms so that's going to be the probability of even plus probability of lower than three minus p of even intersect lower than three or and lower than three all right, so now we're going to get each one of these individually. So I'll just scroll down a little bit. Um, I'll go baby blue down here. So even is all the even numbers when you're rolling a dice. It's going to be 2, 4, and 6. And then the numbers that are less than 3 when you roll a dice is either 1 or 2. So as you can see here, if you just added so um, 2, 4, and 6, and 1 and 2, so if you added the probabilities of each of these, you'd be counting 2 twice. And that's kind of the whole problem of um, this formula is it just stops you from counting two twice. That's what this minus does, right? So for example, the probability of picking an even number is going to be a half, because half the numbers are going to be even, plus the probability of picking a number lower than three is going to be two over six, because the two numbers are lower than three, minus even and lower than three. So you look at the numbers that these have in common, so if it's even and lower than three, and that's going to be 1 over 6 because they have 1 in common, which is this 2 here. Um, yeah, and so it's just a really simple example. I know you could do this in your head, but it just shows you what the formula is for uh, and how you can use it. So you stick all that together. You get 4 over 6. So that means we have the P of even or lower than 3 is equal to 4 over 6. So hopefully that's a good example. Um, I'll scroll down and just show you one more example just to kind of make it a little bit clearer. So in this case, we have a similar question. What is the probability of picking a queen or a hearts from a deck of cards? So again, I'll start by saying P of, we'll say Q or H. And that's the same thing as saying P of Q union H. Um, and that's equal to, so we go back up to our formula. It's going to be P of Q plus, plus P of H minus P of Q uh, intersect H or and H. So the problem here 
the probability of picking a queen is going to be a certain number and the probability of picking hearts is going to be a certain number but if you just add the two of them together you're forgetting that one of the cards is going to be a queen of hearts so you'd be counting it twice if you just added them together and um, so you have to minus the queen of hearts basically so the probability of picking a queen is going to be uh, 4 over 52 because there are uh, four queens and there are 52 cards all together so it's going to be 4 over 52 plus the probability of hearts uh, is going to be 13 over 52 because there are uh, 13 hearts and 52 cards all together and the probability of picking the queen of hearts is 1 over 52 because there's only one of these so if you add all these together you'll get the correct answer for the probability of picking a queen or a hearts um, yeah, so stick all those together and you're going to get 16 over 52 uh, or you can simplify that as uh, 4 over 13 4 over 13 okay so hopefully that uh, I'll just write that here queen four hearts hopefully that shows you this rule and why it's useful uh, so these are both quite simple examples but you can get a lot more difficult examples that are sort of hard to figure out in your head just use this formula it's the easiest way to do it so that is the first one for you that's union probability the first is the probability rules so again you use that if they're asking for um, an or question a or b and there's going to be a crossover okay uh, so now in the next few videos we're going to look at mutually exclusive events and independent events so we'll see you then i hope you found the video useful see you next time